Have you seen these strange creatures? This world is a strange one. I'm back and I'm ready to bring you some creepy Christmas monsters. Tonight, we dive into several different sightings of dangerous wild animals and disturbing supernatural creatures. From zombies to Wendigo, there are so many bizarre creatures out there. Chances are, there's something right out your window watching you at this very moment. So check your windows, under your bed, and in your closet. You can never be too safe, especially after these allegedly real monster sightings. If you want to hear your story in a video like this, go to darknessprevails.org and submit your experiences. We are currently looking for stories about imaginary friends and scary churches. Thanks. Now, the nightmares are coming back with a vengeance. Number 1. The Separator, a Philippine Creature Submitted by Earth Cake First off, a separator is one of the Philippines' most frightening creatures. It hides in the form of a woman. These women often strike on small towns and houses in the woods. They often feast on children after abducting them and killing their mothers, but they also kill other people. But before they start their killing frenzy, they have to separate their upper body from their lower body. They do this in the comfort of their own home or dwelling, somewhere where they feel safe, where they think no one can find them, like abandoned buildings or caves. Its lower body can even stand on its own. And if you're close enough, you can see some gruesome things. Both halves of the body are connected and they can feel when the other is being disturbed. Now, this brings me to my sighting. This happened during the nighttime. I got up to get a glass of water. It was almost six in the morning, so I was still tired. I quickly got my water and began to drink. I went to the stairs to look out the window. And that's when I saw the most bizarre and terrifying thing I've ever seen. There was something crawling on the ground below, something skin colored. I looked closely trying to focus on it and it looked like someone's lower half. I nearly dropped my glass of water. I kept staring at the thing as it crawled. Soon I began to get creeped out, so I backed away from the window. I didn't know what to do, and I was afraid to tell anyone. My cousins and I don't really get along a lot of the time, and they like to tease me, and if they caught wind of me seeing something like this, all they would do is ridicule me and embarrass me. So I kept it to myself, no matter how much I wanted to tell someone. Later that night, when it was getting dark again, I went back to the kitchen to see if I could see this thing still. When I got to the window, I looked down, and it was still there, no longer moving. For a moment, I didn't feel as scared anymore, just weirded out. But a few seconds later, I heard this gasping or panting sound. I bent down and hid under the windowsill. After a few moments, my curiosity got the better of me and I stood back up, looking out the window again. There was now a woman standing outside. She had long black nails, and her hair was white with streaks of red, like she used blood to dye her hair. Though I could barely see her eyes, I saw enough. They were dark as pitch, and she had this odd grin on her face. This wide grin revealed all of her teeth. They looked to be grinded down to a point. Suddenly, this wicked primal scream came from her. Her mouth didn't move an inch, but the shriek still filled the house. It was both painful and horrifying. Immediately, I ducked back down, thinking that she had noticed me. I was scared for my life and shaking at that point. I had heard stories of the separator before, and I knew what they were weak against. Trembling and fearing for my life, I crawled over to the table and I grabbed some salt. As I crawled back over to the window, the screaming stopped. After a few moments, I gathered the courage to stand up again, and she was gone. All that remained was that lower half of someone's body. Now, I forgot to mention that there was no glass in these windows, and that might be part of the reason I was so freaked out, because if she did see me and wanted to, she could come to the window and pull me out or crawl through herself. So immediately, I poured the salt onto the lower half. I then ducked back down below the window, because if that was a separator, it would know that I poured salt on it and it would be back soon. For the longest time, I sat there, still and silent, listening to what may come outside the window, but I heard nothing. 
It seemed like an hour or two passed before I finally stood up and looked out the window again. But this time, there was nothing there, and the lower half was gone. Still terrified, I ran up to my room and tried to go to sleep, though I didn't. The next morning, I built up some courage and I ran outside to where the window was, and there on the ground where I saw the lower half, there was this mark like something had been burned there, and I swear it wasn't there before. We don't burn things there at that part of the house. This feeling of relief and fear filled me. This sight told me two things. One, I stopped and maybe even killed the separator that was stalking our yard. And two, there are things out there that we don't understand. Deadly, dreadful, terrible things. Because a terrifying piece of my folklore was standing right outside my window. I don't know what it would have done if I never poured the salt on it. And I just hope it's gone for good. Number two, Suburban Zombie, submitted by Cryliff. This happened to me about one year ago, which would make me 16 at the time. It was early in the winter, and I would often go out for walks and just enjoy the cold nights. Winter is my favorite season, after all, and I love the cold. This night, however, I didn't feel like walking very much, so I just decided I wanted to sit down in the backyard for a while and look up at the stars. I pulled on my warmest jacket I could find and I said to my parents that I was just going out back and I wouldn't be out for long. God, I didn't know how right I was. I opened the sliding glass door and made my way over to our picnic table to lie down. Normally, the ground would be more comfortable, but the grass was wet that night. I lay down on the table and tried my best to get as comfortable as you can while laying on a wooden table, but I couldn't shake the feeling that I wasn't alone out there. Now, I consider myself mildly paranoid and I have anxiety issues, so feeling watched wasn't uncommon for me, but this time it was different. Much, much different. I looked around for only a brief moment, and that's when I saw it, and I froze in fear. I remember it in very vivid detail, it was standing upright between a bush and a tree in my neighbor's backyard, only about 35 feet away. Its eyes were nothing but black holes, and its skin was a dark, grayish, nasty green. The skin around its mouth was torn away, revealing strangely sharp teeth and dark gums. Yet it was standing perfectly still. But it wasn't the kind of still a tree trunk would have. It was still like a predator before it strikes. My first thought was to not make any sudden movements. Trying my best to hold back tears so I could still see the dang thing, I got up slowly from the table and I lowered myself to the ground, not once breaking my vision from it. I backed away really slow until I felt like I was close enough to the house that I could bolt. And I charged as fast as I possibly could, opening the door and slamming it shut in an instant. I could not manage to sleep at all that night. It was the only time in my life I've had such an instinctive fear that if I didn't run, I would die. I told myself over and over, my mind was just playing tricks on me and that it was just a stump or a tree or log propped up against something and it looked funny. But I checked the next morning and there was nothing there in the spot that it was standing. There was nothing that I could have mistaken it for. It was completely gone with no trace of anything being there at all. I still have a hard time going out at night now, and I have very thick curtains on my windows to the backyard. But before I go, just a quick word of advice. If you're planning on walking around at night, at the very least, bring a friend or a family member. Trust me, you won't regret it. Number three, a monster is watching me sleep. Submitted by Robert. My name is Robert, but my parents and friends call me Junior, and this happened around two years ago. I was 11, and I was sleeping in my brother's room. I was asleep, but something woke me up. I heard what sounded like a low growl. I shook it off as my mind playing tricks on me. I was very exhausted, very tired. By that time, though, I was thirsty, so I decided to get up and go downstairs to grab a cup of water. I entered the kitchen and got my drink, when I got my glass of water, I heard yet another low growl, and this time it was starting to freak me out, but I had no idea what I was hearing. 
I went upstairs a little faster than I came down. I went back to my brother's room, and this time I lifted the blinds to let the streetlights illuminate the room. And after that, I fell asleep on the floor with my black blanket. This made me feel a little better. The black blanket blended in with the corner of the room. But not too long after, I sat up to the sound of a woman crying. I opened my eyes to see this thing that will haunt me for the rest of my life. This creature was sticking to the wall of my house. Its skin was a grayish color. It had long, skinny limbs that seemed to bend in the wrong way. Its mouth making a crying noise, and its torso seemed too small to carry the rest of its body. I let out a quiet, oh my god. But it seemed to hear me. I saw its head poking around, trying to find where the sound came from. But it couldn't seem to find me, so I just stayed still, watching this thing just outside the window, looking in, peeking around. I swear it was there for several hours, until the sun began to come up. Then the thing staggered away, out of view, and I did not dare get up and look out the window. I don't know what that was that night, but it was definitely the most terrifying moment of my life. We moved out of that house three months ago. I've never told anyone this, not even my family, and I hope this is a safer way of telling others. Hopefully some of you will believe me. Number four. Red-Eyed Horror, submitted by J. Ben O. One. I've had an urge to share this story for a long while. The following events that you will hear happened up until about two months ago. I live in the country in Middle Tennessee, and I have grown up in the woods all my life, and I walk through the woods around my home all the time. Let me describe to you the layout of the property. This will help with the story. My house is set in a small flat area that has a few trees around it. Behind it about 50 yards is the shop and dog pen. Then to the left of that, there is a big open field, and behind that field is a thick, dense forest. One day a long time ago, when I was really young, my dad and I were up late, and I was with him when he decided to get a late night snack, so we went down to the kitchen. As soon as we got down there, I felt the hair on the back of my neck stand up, and my dad pushed me back. I looked out of the window of the kitchen, and I saw these two glowing blood-red eyes staring in at us. My dad picks up the first thing within reach, which happened to be a baseball, and he chucked it through the window and hit this thing. He hurried me back up to bed, where it took me almost the rest of the night to fall asleep. But right when I began to nod off, I was awoken by a faint scratch on my window. Frozen in fear, I didn't dare move, but I did glance to a place where the curtain didn't cover the window, and by God, I saw those same eyes. This scratching at my window has been going on for years now. Today, I am 15, and I've grown some, and I've actually gotten used to the sound somewhat, until recently. It was an average Friday night, and I had a daily task of putting the dog away, something I'm not fond of. Our dog is a grown St. Bernard and holds his own against the other dogs. I grabbed my shoes and a light and a gun out of habit and I headed out to grab the dog. I called and whistled for him, but he never showed up. So I go and make my way to the pen, a walk I always hated. After a few seconds of shining light on the ground as I walked, I started to see this glistening on the ground, like moisture. I knelt down and looked closer and it looked like blood. As I continue on, there seems to be more and more of it. That is, until something else glints in my flashlight's beam. It's the same red eyes that I've been seeing. Those same red eyes from long ago, when my dad and I went to get his late night snack. But now I could see these eyes were attached to an insanely muscular yet skinny figure. This creature must have been about eight feet tall, with pale gray skin. Its head was rounded and dome-shaped, with sharp fangs hanging out of the corners of its mouth. Its hands were long, black claws. They ended in sharp points. At that moment, in sheer panic, I brought my gun up and without aiming, I fired twice. I highly doubt I hit the thing. But the moment I fired, the thing ran right past me, making a terrible hissing screech. It ran through the field, screeching all the way until it disappeared into the woods. The thing had run so fast through the field 
that I couldn't keep my light on it. Needless to say, I couldn't find my dog. The next morning, I got up with my dad to go investigate, and I go to where I encountered this creature, and I see what looks like burn marks where it was standing and leading off into the field. But we never found my dog. Better yet, the tracks we found in the field where I saw this thing match the tracks that we found later under my window. Number five, Wendigo in the Woods, submitted by The Vampire Man. This isn't my story, but rather one told to me by a friend a couple of years ago. The event she related to me took place somewhere in the Northwestern United States. I'm from England and my US geography isn't great, so please forgive any vagueness in regards to the location. Also, before beginning the story proper, I should probably provide a few details about the legend of the Wendigo, just in case anyone is unfamiliar. The Wendigo is a demonic half-human monster that appears in the mythology of some Algonquian peoples. It's thought to be born when a human resorts to cannibalism and has three key traits that really depends on what mythology you're reading. One, they eat human flesh. Two, they move extremely quickly. And three, they can imitate voices in order to lure in prey. My friend, who for the sake of privacy I'll call Gemma, was about 13 or 14 at the time. She was in a car headed towards California with her father, her stepmother, and two younger brothers. At some point relatively early on in the journey, her stepmom says that a couple of miles ahead there's meant to be a really beautiful rock face covered in vines that she'd read about and that it might be a nice idea for them to stretch their legs and go look for it. Everyone agrees, not least because both of Gemma's brothers really needed to pee. So a couple of miles down the road, they park up in front of these woods through which the rock face is supposed to be. My friend's dad says that he'll supervise the two boys while Gemma and her stepmom go ahead and they'll catch up with them in a few minutes. So Gemma and her stepmom head off into the woods one important detail to remember is that it had rained very recently and so the woodland floor was very muddy. Nothing particularly eventful happened while the pair were looking for the rock face. Long story short, they never found it as the stepmom had only a vague idea of where exactly it might be. However, as the woods were set on top of a sort of cliff, they did get a really nice view of the river below when they emerged out to the other side. Glad to have been able to at least stretch their legs after however many hours in a car, the two of them headed back into the woods. Gemma's dad and her brothers had not caught up with them like they said they would, so Gemma's stepmom was concerned that they might have gotten lost. The woods weren't that big, as far as they could tell, but it was still a possibility. Plus, the ground, as previously mentioned, was sodden with rain, so the mud could have slowed them down. So Gemma and her stepmom were walking back through the woods, and as they reached what was roughly the middle of town, from somewhere just up ahead of them, they heard the dad, who yells, Where are you guys? We can't find you. The two women roll their eyes, and one of them yells back, something like, We're over here, just head to the left, and then they carry on walking. They are most of the way back to the car, when they hear the dad's voice again, only this time, it's from some distance behind them. Like the two of them had completely passed him without seeing one another. He yells the same thing again. Where are you guys? We can't find you. Mildly irritated, the two women yell back. Look, we're just gonna head to the car. We'll see you soon. When Gemma and her stepmom get back to the car, they find that the dad and the two boys are set inside waiting for them. Climbing inside, Gemma's stepmom asks the kids, did you have fun? In reply to which the dad chuckles, we didn't bother in the end. It was too muddy and the kids were complaining. After they'd done their business, we just went back to the car. Gemma just laughed in reply and didn't think anything of it until a few miles down the road. Glancing at her brother's shoes, she saw that unlike her own thoroughly muddy ones, theirs were clean. She asked her stepmom to check her dad's and his were the same it was highly unlikely that they would have been able to hear the dad calling to them from the middle of the woods if he was still by the car. 
and even if this had been the case, then how could he have been able to overtake them before beating them back to the car with enough time left to thoroughly clean their shoes? The voice they had heard was definitely his, and even if a stranger had somehow been able to imitate him, they hadn't heard or seen another soul while they were there in those woods. Gemma will never know for sure who or what it was that she heard that day, but being familiar with the legend of the Wendigo, she says that she's forever glad the two of them never came face to face. And number six, something is stalking me and my friends. Submitted by Luna Ragnarok. Back in the summer of this year, 2016, and before I stopped going for my nightly walks and jogs, I was on my regular route and nearing my block. Keep in mind, it was about 10 at night or somewhere around that, so the only light I had were porch lights and street lamps. Now, I don't take any hallucinogens, nor am I making this up, and I wasn't the only one who saw this thing. Another key point for this is the fact that I live in Florida, and this is where this happened. Not only this, but I have always been prone to paranormal or creature sightings. Anyway, on to the story. Like I said, I was out at about 10 at night and I was walking alone before running into two of my friends. Let's call them Jane and Emma. They had just been to a party and were walking back to Emma's place for a sleepover and I agreed to walk them over there since they seemed a little on edge about being out so late. Sometime later, we were about five blocks from Emma's house and we were just laughing and gossiping like teenage girls typically do when out of nowhere, I got this chill down my spine. The only way I can explain it was the feeling you might get if you're being stalked. I told my friends and they reported the same thing. Like an idiot, I begged them to walk me back to my house since we were a block away at the time. They agreed and to this day, I regret begging them that. Maybe then none of this would have happened. Then again, we were all stupid for being out so late in the first place. Anyway, we reached my driveway and we were talking and whatnot. When all of a sudden, we heard a trash bin fall in the distance. We all jumped. Jane pointed her flashlight down the street, expecting a raccoon or something. Then again, I'm not sure what she was expecting to see. And that's when we saw something standing in the middle of the road. This thing's limbs were far too long for its body and I'm not sure if it had fur or not. Most of its body was pitch black in appearance, but some of it was exposed bone and vertebrae. Its eyes had no pupils whatsoever, and please don't get me started on its tail. After at least two minutes of a stare down between us and this, this thing, it finally began to scramble towards us like a freaking spider. We all screamed and we ran into my house. Since then, I have seen this creature multiple times, and my friends refuse to talk about it. I've sketched it a few times, but I still don't know what exactly it was. A few of my friends have dubbed it a Wendigo, while others call it a Skinwalker. I'm still not sure what to call it myself. If anyone else has seen something similar, please share your story. Driving on these back country roads at night to visit my family these past few days, it really tells me something. I drove through a hundred miles of rolling fields, winding forests, seemingly endless nature. Despite all our cameras and mobile devices, this world is simply too vast to be completely sure that there isn't something out there, something that hunts at night, something that is never more than a few feet away when you walk the trails. There may be people all over the world and advanced available technology, but we seem to forget how big the planet is and how much uninhabited nature surrounds us. Good night. Be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And don't forget to send us your stories about imaginary friends and creepy churches. Just go to darknessprevails.org. I'll be waiting. Thanks.